Okay, for First Chronicles chapter 17, we went last night into the covenants. Because we're coming up to the, the Dave, Davidic covenant. And the study that we went through them last night, all nine of eight of them. Now tonight we're going to do the dispensations. And the Bible says in 2 Timothy 2.15, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, but rightly divine the word of truth. And you got to rightly divide because within covenants and the dispensations, men go wrong. And they jump to where they're not supposed to be. So we're going to look at, there are seven of them. In Genesis 128. Genesis 128. And the Bible says, and God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. So with the first one, we have the dispensation called innocency. Innocency. Man was created in innocency. There's no sin. There's no crime. Place in a perfect environment. Subject to the absolutely simple test. And warned of the consequence of disobedience. The woman fell through pride. The man knowingly did the sin. Eve handed him the fruit. The Bible says he the Bible says he was there with her, Genesis chapter 3, the whole time. And again, God restored the sinning creatures, but this dispensation of innocency ended at the judgment and their expulsion from the garden. So the life in the garden is the first dispensation. And what you do is you run into people who run into that diet, you know, only eat fruits, no me eating me and blah, 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 blah. That dispensation is gone. The next one is Genesis three twenty three. Genesis three twenty three. Look how Adam falls into into these. And had Adam never sinned, had Adam never gone against the word of God, we would only have the Adamic covenant. We would only have the innocency uh, dispensation. But because we disobey God. In 3.23 of Genesis, we have. Therefore, the Lord God sent him forth from the Garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. So this is the, we come to the end of one unto the other. And the second dispensation is conscience. By disobedience, man came to the personal and experimental of knowledge of good and evil. They ate of that fruit. The fruit of the tree of knowledge and good and evil. What do they know now? They know about crime. They're going to know about murder in a moment. They're going to know about death. Uh, good as obedience and evil as disobedience. And to know the will of God. Through the knowledge of, of conscience awoke. Expelled from Edom. And they're placed under the, the Adamic covenant. Uh... The result of this second testing of man is stated in Genesis 6 5. And the dispensation ended in the judgment of the flood. So each of these dispensations, you're seeing a judgment. You're seeing an activity of God upon the activity of what man does. Now, God is holy, and God is long suffering. God is not going to just throw people into hell. He's going to warn you. He's going to give you his commandments. He's going to give you his word. He's going to give you that free will. And when you violate it as Adam has violated it, and as the people of the world are going to violate it, when we come to the third one, Genesis 8, 21, and each of these things is where man is going wrong, not God. Man. In Genesis 8.21, we read, 
And the Lord smelled a sweet savor. And the Lord said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground any more for man's sake. For the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. What a, what a great thing that God has said about man on this side of the flood. Neither will I again smite any more everything living as I have done. So now we got the third dispensation, human government. And in chapter 9, we see Noah set forth with his sons. We see chapter 10, the, the table of nations. We'll see the Tower of Babel. Under conscience, as an in innocent man, utterly failed. Adam failed by eating the fruit. Man has, feel, has failed under uh, the innocency because, I mean, under conscience, because the whole world is just wicked before God. The dispensation, uh, uh, wait a minute. The judgment of the flood marks the end of the second dispensation and the beginning of the human government. And then you have the Noetic covenant sets forth in this one. The distinct feature institution for the first time, human government. The government of man by man. The highest function of government is the judicial taking of life. And you find that in Genesis 9. Cain killed his brother. Why did not God kill Cain? There was no law up to now. There was no government to be put on. And why you have Peter and Paul who write about the government, where to obey the powers that be. That comes all the way back to Genesis 9. There is no Hebrew nation yet. There is no called out law people of the Jewish people. We are a Gentile nation here in chapter 9. And God says any man or any animal that sheds blood, that's the mark of the human government. You are responsible. All other, all other governmental powers are implied in that. It follows with the third dispensation distinctly that the human government. Man is responsible to govern the world of God. The responsibility rests upon the whole race. Jew or Gentile, which there is no Jew yet. Unto the failure of Israel under the Palestine covenant brought the judgment of the captivity when the times of Gentiles began and the government of the world passed exclusively unto the Gentile power. Now, we're running, we're going, we're going, and now what we're going to do is we're going to run to the next one, next dispensation, Genesis 12, 1. Now we get to Abraham. And we have in this one, we have the promise. Now, Abraham is called out. Abraham is the father of the Jewish people. Abraham, though not Isaac yet, he's not born. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, the 12 tribe, we have the Hebrew race. But the dispensation, this one, the fourth one under promise is through Abraham. Now you got to be careful. Because the Bible distinctly directs Abraham, Isaac, it is not Ishmael. If you say Ishmael, you have violated this dispensation. Because the promise goes nowhere to Ishmael. For Abraham and descendants, it's a evident that the uh, Haber, uh, yeah, Abrahamic covenant made a, and this is what we looked at last night, made a great change. They became distinctly the heirs of a promise and land. That's the promise. Nowhere has God ever told any group of people, you have a provided land. The descendants of Abraham had but to abide in their own land to inherit every blessing. They were told to wipe out the people in the land, wipe out the religions of their land, and in, under Joshua and Judges, they failed. And just before even Joshua and Moses, when they're on the other side of the Jordan River, uh, half-tribe Manasseh, Gad, and Reuben tell Moses, we like to settle on this land. It is beautiful land for our cattle. That's not the promise of God. God said the land of Canaan. Uh, and in Egypt, they lost their blessings, but not their covenant. 
The dispensation of the promise ended when Israel rashly accepted the law. Grace had prepared to deliver Moses. Uh, Moses came down and said, this is what God, yeah, we'll do everything that God told you to, told us to do. God had not told them everything. And we set forth into the next dispensation law, Exodus 19.8. And you have a problem with, with the promise and the law. They are directed to one group of people and one group of people only. There are people running around calling themselves Jehovah Witnesses. They proclaim from the beginning of their start that they're the 144,000 Gentile virgins to go out in all the world during the Gentile time of the Antichrist and to beat the Antichrist system by stock voting food and stuff like that and beating the mark. Absolutely not correct. The 144,000 are Jewish men, except for the tribe of Dan and Ephraim. Levi is mentioned and Joseph is mentioned as a tribe again. They're, they're virgins. And when you run around and you've got over a million, if not a billion people in your organization, you have defiled a number. And I want to see your birth certificate and the lineage that you go back to Abraham. Uh, the promise, Isaac, Jacob, the 12 tribes, and now we're at the law. And there are church people today in the church age that will go back and say, we, we can't have this, we can't eat this, we can't do this, we have to do this, we have to have church service on Saturday, putting you under the law. Now, this is dispensation, Exodus 19.8. Okay. And all the people answered again and say, all that the Lord has spoken, we will do. Do you know what's going to be spoken in 20 and 21 and 22 and 23 in Deuteronomy? You got to build a, a battlement around your roof. If you go potty, you got to have a weapon to, to bury what you go potty. If you're out in a battle and you touch a dead man's body, you got to do something for seven days. Then you got to go wash. And if you don't, you're, you're executed. you got certain feasts that you have to be. The Jew can't do the law today in 2019. There's no temple. There's no high priest. Now, you got God and Jesus Christ, but they don't believe that. So when they come out and say, we're going to do all, that is foolish words. And the fifth dispensation is law. This dispensation extends from Sinai to Calvary, from Exodus to the cross. So if that's the case, law does not show up after the death, burial, and resurrection according to the scriptures of Jesus Christ. It ended it. The history of the Israelite in the wilderness and in the land is one long record of the violation of the law. God told him, go into a piece of land. We looked at that, the land. He promised to Abraham. So promise of the land still carries over to the law. But they never obeyed God. They were griping and complaining all the way to the promised land. They get to the door of the, prom the promised land. They go in and they carry these grapes upon two men. And it's like, let's go, Caleb said. Let's go, Joshua said. No, but there's giants in the land. Oh, we're going to die. And it took 40 years for their children to go in as those people died out. Uh, what did they say? All that the Lord has spoken, we will do. You did not. So under innocency, let's look at man of uh, the definition of the dispensation. Adam in this perfect state disobeyed the word of God and ate the fruit. And the judgment of that came you're out of here. You're out of the garden. And you can't say man is a product of, of, his, of his environment. Adam had the most perfect environment ever. He disobeyed God. And then you had the, the time of innocency. With, with uh, I mean, excuse me, conscience. All right? He's come out of the garden. Now he knows death. He knows sin. He knows crying. He knows all the evil and good. 
The first baby to be brought forth by Eve, she would have labor pains and she would have sorrow to follow that. However she got the news, Abel was dead and she knew it. Because when she had a third son, he said, God's replaced something, uh, another son to replace Abel that was killed. She knew exactly what happened. And Adam goes out there, he works the garden, he starts, what is this water in my face? What is my underarms are starting to stink? And he goes back out to the garden a week later, he's like, what is all these plants here? That's supposed to be my tomatoes. And he's discovered weeds. So when man sinned against God, the judgment is curse weeds death and then the earth is all drowned out because man is just wicked they're just vile they're just oh against god he angers god he says except for eight people and uh, some animals in an ark i'm drowning out the whole earth the ark rests upon ararat Noah and his family come out god says listen man it's just still wicked but we got a human government Noah comes out of that ark, he drinks some, some fermented grape juice and gets drunk. Wow, what great. We've got the, the table of nations where all three of those sons went out to Africa, to Europe, to Asia, all through the world. And you got a bunch of men that are getting together for the first ecumenical movement of religion to get to heaven, not God, by their own works. And God says, comes down, well, I got to scatter their language, now we got to press one for English. And the dope I dealt with today can't understand the God that made the language in, in Genesis chapter 9 can't give us the Bible in the language that we speak. Kind of, kind of foolish. And then from the human government, we got the land of promise, Abraham. One nation above all nations, one man. But Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, not Ishmael. So people try to steal that promise. I said the church, the Roman Catholic Church, wants that piece of land. The Arabians want that piece of land. The, the, the PLO wants that piece of land that God given to one group of people. And over there in the Middle East, when you go to, to their public schools and they pull the map down the world and pull down the map of the Middle East area, Israel is not mentioned on that plot of land. And the United Nations says, give a little more to the PLO. Give a little more to the Jordan. Give a little less to, to Israel. That's cursing a group of people. And we come into the law. We come to the law and people speak rationally. We're going to do everything. Uh, and we have, I have people come up to me and say, well, if God spoke to me, I, and listen, God spoke to the nation of Israel and they still sin. Moses is up on the up up on the mountain. He, he's getting those the Ten Commandments. God's right with his finger, and they're down in the bottom having an orgy of partying and dancing and singing to the great golden calf. They sin. They spend 40 years in the wilderness in sin. So this law, number five, it ends with grace. John chapter one. John chapter one. This is the dispensation we are in. Grace. So when you got somebody who's trying to put you under the law, you're in the wrong dispensation. John chapter 1, verse 17. For the law was given by Moses. Okay, yep. Yeah, that's the dispensation of Moses. But grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. So when we got a problem, when Jesus Christ was born and lived on this earth in his ministry, Jesus obeyed the law and did the law. Yes. But when he suffered and died and was buried according to the scriptures and was buried and arose again the third day according to the scriptures. And when, the, when he meets with his disciples and before he's ascended up to heaven. And Acts chapter 1, he goes up in Acts chapter 2 verse 38. They're doing something they haven't done. They're going out preaching Jesus, the death, burial, and resurrection. They're going out preaching Acts chapter uh, 2, Acts 2.38. Repent and be baptized. You don't see anywhere that in the, in, the, in the law. The law said bring a cow, bring a cattle, bring a goat, bring a sheep. Acts says bring God, bring Jesus Christ. 
Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. We we get to with Paul. Uh, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. We get to Ephesians chapter 2. Not of works, least any man boast. Well, the entire law was works. That the Jews said in Genesis 19, 8, whatever God says, we will do. Really? You know, Jesus Christ said, believe on me to be saved. Whatsoever the Father has given me, the thou shalt uh, believe on me that the Father sent. They never believed him. And that was under the law. So that during the period of the law is just total disobedience. The law, Paul says, is for us to say, hey, guess what? I disowned, I, dis I dishonored my mother and I dishonored my father at least once in my life uh, lifetime growing up. What makes what that what makes me that? I'm a sinner. I have coveted something that's not mine. What does to me for that? I'm a sinner. But in the period of grace, I don't bring a lamb. Not of bulls and, and goats, the Hebrew says. But I bring the precious blood of Jesus Christ. If I should confess my sins, he is faithful and just to forgive me of my sins. That's grace. It's nothing I can do. That was the law. And even the law couldn't fulfill because when they died under the law, and if they did right, in, in God's eyes, fulfilling the law to the best they could. When they died, they didn't go to heaven. They went to Abraham's bosom. Today, a man in grace, if he were to die in Jesus Christ, he will be absent from the body and present with the Lord. If he dies without the grace, he dies without the atonement of Jesus Christ, he will wake up in hell just as much as a man in the law that disobeyed, that disobeyed God. So, and people during the grace period runs to the law. Seven-day Adventists, Jehovah Witnesses, Catholics. Catholics say in order to get grace, you got to do the sacraments. Where? Where? I don't see that. I don't, I don't read that. Now, you have to do things in the law. You don't have to do anything. It's all done by Jesus Christ. And now we are in the time of the Gentiles. The Jews over the years since Exodus 19, 8, they had disobeyed God. They had disobeyed God. They had disobeyed God. God came forth, manifested in the flesh, and they rejected him. He came unto his own. His own received him not. And the nation of Israel outright said, crucify him. Crucify him. Early book of Acts. What are you going to do with Jesus? We're going to, we're going to whip. We're going to, we're going to prison. We're, we're going to give your apostles a hard time. Paul gets the point one time. That's it. I'm going to the Gentiles. I'm going to go to the ministry that God gave. And he still went to the Jews. God ain't done with the Jews. Paul was called to the, to the Gentiles under the, 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 the fullness of the time of the Gentiles, but he still went back to the Jews. Anybody can get saved. Anybody can be the children of God during this period. During the law, it was only the Jewish people. Now, it's the Jew and the Gentile, Romans chapter 10. And yet, if they're to believe on Jesus, they're neither Jew nor neither Greek, Romans. They are Christians. And we come to another period of time, the last one, Ephesians 1.10. Ephesians 1.10. We are in the dispensation of fullness of times. We're coming to the end. Ephesians 1.10, the last one. That in the dispensation of fullness of time, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, which are on earth, even in him. So the dispensation of fullness of time, there's the seventh and last order of ages. Which the, the condition of human and life on earth is identical with the kingdom covenant to David. Jesus Christ is the is the king. Jesus Christ is, has removed the curse that Adam was put over. And when that dispensation of fullness of times comes, and it has ended the Gentile realm. 
You are back under the Davidic, Davidic company, where it's the throne of David with the nation of Israel, the 12 tribes, the king of the king and the lords of lords, which goes to the title of Jews, not church. I don't care what your hymns say or sing. Jesus Christ is never king of the church. Only one time he's really king over the church is when we are made kings in the millennial kingdom. And you could say king of kings then, but it's the millennial kingdom of the Jewish people with the temple back, with the law back. And it's not about the Gentiles. It's all about the people of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Uh, and let's see, it gathers into itself under Christ. All past times, the time of oppression and misrule ends by Christ taking the kingdom. No one's ever going to persecute the Jew again. No one ever is going to gather themselves against the Jew again. And those that have in the, in the tribulation period, the time of Jacob's trouble, they will be considered goat nations. And Jesus Christ will set up a judgment before that millennial kingdom. And he'll take the goats and say, get out of here. And he say, who are the goats? Those that cursed the nation of Israel. And then you got the sheep nations, Gentile nations. You say, who are the sheep nations? They'll be the nations that helped that Jew during the time of Jacob's trouble. They will feed them as much as they can. They will take care of them as much as they can. They will visit them in their prison. They will do what they can under the reign and, and, the, uh, and the power of the Antichrist. And their reward to Jesus Christ would be they will get a millennial inheritance for helping God's people. God's people are who? The Jewish people. Listen, if you, and, and the thing they got it full, if you go through the tri tribulation period and you come across the agency of Jehovah Witnesses today, and if you do whatever you can to the Jehovah Witness, they ain't going to get you nowhere but into hell. There's going to be 144,000 virgins of the tribes of Israel. They're going to go out and they're going to evangelize, I wonder who, in Jacob's trouble. The Jewish people. And they're going to remind them Jews of the law. They're going to be like Moses and like Joshua. This is the law. This is your God. This is the scripture. We are in a time in the period of the devil right now. Your Messiah is coming. He's come the first time and you reject him as a nation. He's coming back at this time. Man, he's coming back angry. But we're not done. We're not through. And when Jesus Christ, the Messiah, comes, it will only get better and better for us Jews that do what we're supposed to do. Now, what is the salvation of the dispensation of innocency? Don't eat the fruit. Have you ever had anybody tell you not to eat certain fruit today during the age of grace? Yes, I have. You get people all the time, don't eat this fruit. Uh, a conscience. What was the what was the the thing of the conscience again? It was. Uh, now we know what we've done wrong. Try to behave yourself, and look where that ended up. God was so angry with mankind, I drowned it all out. That did us very good. We come upon human government. What is the human government? What is this realm of the dispensation? We have laws to follow that are man's laws. And bribery. <laughs> and let's get to heaven on our own account. That didn't work so well. So under promise, God says, I'm going to choose one particular race of people. I'm going to pick one particular people of Abraham. How did Abraham do? Hey, this is my sister. You can have her. Goat, sheep, lambs, men servants, maid servants. Cool. Take her. Well, God said, honey, we're going to have a baby. Really? Yeah. God all powerful. He's all powerful. Honey, here's my, here's my servant girl. Take her and have her. An offspring of a people who will hate your children, Isaac, for the rest of their lives, Ishmael. That, that went very well, didn't it? Jacob. Oh, brother, you're really, really, really hungry? I'll tell you what, you serve me your birthright. 
Okay, here's your beans and bread and wine. And then he goes into his father. He goes, who art thou? He says, I'm Esau, your, your son. No, you're not. And then he goes off to find a wife of a particular race of people to keep that lineage going strong. And Laban just totally messes with this young man. And he works seven years for one woman, and he gets the wrong woman. That didn't do so well. And they end up in Egypt under rigor and harsh. And up comes their, their ruler. Up comes this person who's going to lead them out. And what's he do? He gets mad at an Egyptian, kills him, and buries him in the sand. That's great. And God calls all these miracles and all these great things to happen upon Egypt to get his people out. This is the promise. And they get them out. The Passover night, what marvelous, wondrous works of the Jewish people. They have come out of Egypt. How great and thankful they are. We have no water. We have no food. We got no water. The Egyptians are going to kill us. Oh, we can only go back. Oh, remember the watermelons and leeks. They come to Mount Sinai. Everything that God said we will do, we will do. No, you didn't. Now we're under law. Thou shalt not, thou shalt not, thou shalt not, thou shalt not. Honor thy mother and father. You got to do this, you got to do this. You got this month, you got that month. You got this day, you got this day. You got to bring this lamb, you got to bring that goat. You got to bring this thing. You got to blow a trumpet here. You got to do this here. You got to do this for your house. You can't do this with this person. You got to. You can't hate your neighbor. You can't say finders, keepers, losers, weepers. You can't do that. You got to get rid of those people that's in your land. And they intermarry with all that. And they end up going to captivity. And they build into, they start marrying the Babylonians. They start marrying the Gentiles. It aggravates Ezra and Nehemiah. They come back, they build that temple. There's a great thing. Hula, everything going great. And you get the Malachi. The priests are doing wrong. They're snuffing their nose at God in the temple. Sir. They're just totally going against God in every sense way. It's been 400 years of silence for God to the Jewish people. Up comes Jesus Christ, born according to the prophecies, virgin, born in Bethlehem. Look how great this little boy is. Shepherds show up. Two years later, about that time, then the wise men come. They bring the gifts to Jesus. Jesus goes out about uh, 30 years old. He meets John the Baptist in the wilderness. People are repenting. They're getting baptized. Here comes the Lamb of God, which takes away the sins of the world. Up pops Satan. After 40 days and 40 nights of fasting, up pops Satan. The three temptations. Jesus begins his ministry. He calls out four fishermen. They're battling each other. James and John, they're just, woohoo. Lord God, this city, they didn't do what you said. Shall we call down fire? Oh, what's your problem? Man, you believe he called that tax collector amongst us? <laughs> what is this thing? Judas, meanwhile, he's taking the bag and he's, he's stealing from Jesus. What a lively. You, you imagine what is not written about Jesus amongst those 12 disciples? I've been with fish. Well, I've been with lobstermen. They're an angry group of people. At one point, a woman comes and Jesus, and they tell Jesus, get this woman out of here. They're about to feed 5,000 people. Jesus, tell these people to go buy some food. They were aggravated with the people and the multitude. Peter's going through a crowd and, and he said, who touched me? Peter's like, what do you mean? See, that guy just put an elbow in my face. What's going on, Jesus? What do you mean? We're still under the law. Peter, Satan desires the chief. Uh, I am praying for you. You're going to deny me three times. Oh, no, not me, Lord. No, no, no. I love you to the end. Hey, you were with him. No, no, not me. <laughs> hey, weren't you? One? <laughs> and then, no, he runs off. And the only disciple is at the cross of Jesus Christ is John, the women, and the mother of Jesus. We're still under the law. After the Jews told Pilate, crucify him. We don't want him. He's not going to give us bread. He's not going to give us water. He's not going to get rid of the government. Crucify him. He suffers and dies on that cross. Three days and three later, all the disciples are gathered at that tomb. All the women are gathered at that tomb Sunday morning. They're waiting for the resurrection, for the sunrise service of Jesus Christ. Absolutely not. We're still under the law. They haven't been obedient to God. The women coming. They're coming to the tomb. Amen. Glory to God. Sunday morning. Oh, they got the spices for a dead body. 
Did not Jesus tell them in the word in three days and three nights as Jonah was in the heart of the earth, so I'll be in the heart of the earth and I am going to come alive? Then he, they didn't believe that. Now we have the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now we go into grace. All our sins are upon Jesus Christ, Isaiah 53, in the law, prophets. To believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Wonderful great. Um, let me see here real quick. Because we're here. See the Galatians. Well, without looking at it, is he in Galatians? I'll take Ephesians, Philippians, or Colossians. One of the churches. You know what they're doing? Uh, let's see. I have like a quick note here. Look at it. Um, one of these churches here that Paul writes to is. I don't have a quick note for it. But one of these four churches, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, one of these churches are saying, as a Christian, go back under the law. We just came out of dispensational law. You got false deceivers, Paul says. Now here's the problem. You got in the page of grace of the dispensation. You got in your Bible. You got a complete letter written by Paul, one of these churches. That, Let's do the law. And it's happening today. They'll bring you or try to bring you under the law. You must do that. You must do that. You must listen to the church. That, that law is gone. We're under grace. What is it today in the dispensation of grace? It's all upon Jesus and only Jesus Christ. That's it. Jesus said on the period of grace for the age, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. The book of Hebrews says, not of the bulls of goats and lambs and anything. That's not going to do you no good. That's grace. And some people try to put you under law. And then the seventh dispensation, what is it? Gentiles, that's it. It's gone. It's gone back to Abraham. It's coming, by the way, almost of the promise. And the law and grace. Because there is Jesus Christ in the temple in the millennium, the, the, the law, and there is Jesus Christ grace. And I guarantee in the tribulation period, which is the law again, I guarantee there'll be people in the tribulation period preaching by faith of Jesus Christ alone, minus works, you should be saved. And that's wrong. Because in the tribulation period, it's got to be the law and great in faith in Jesus. Both of those. And there are people in the church age teaching the law. There will be people in the tribulation period. It's only by grace. And that's wrong. And when you fail to, to study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word. When you fail that and you fail the covenant or you fail the period of time of dispensation, you don't rightly divide. You fall under a heresy and you'll be ashamed before God. The people that you are teaching and the people that follow you. And you may end up by Jesus but Lord, didn't we do great works in your sight? Didn't we cast out evil spirits? Didn't we do this? Depart from me, workers of iniquity. I never knew you. Why? You were in a wrong dispensation. You were in the wrong covenant. It's not what I've done. I cannot tell God today, well, God, look, look at all the people I preached to. Uh-uh. No way. No how. So you got to get these periods right. The covenants are the endemic covenant. The Edemic Covenant, the, no, the Noahic Covenant, the Abrahamic, the Mosaic, the Palestine, the Davidic, and the New Covenant. We looked at that last night. And dispensations are innocency, conscience, human government, promise, law, grace, and the fullness of time. Rightly divide them. Because if you cross over to the wrong dispensation, you're in trouble. You got false doctrine. 